Hello everybody and welcome back to Rogue Tech where we are currently pacifying the area around this research station. There are some reinforcements that have come in. We see an Osprey here. We see something here. And we see a Warhammer 2C here. So these guys are in our rear arc. And we're going to need to deal with that. Yep. First things first, we're going to turn our longbow around. And I would like to get our longbow out of the unsteady area over here. But it looks like that's not really super viable. So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to position it here. These guys are within minimum range. So we're obviously not going to fire the ELRMs. But we're going to position here. We're going to Vigilance... Actually, are we going to Vigilance the Longbow? No, because I would rather that they attack the front arc of the Longbow than the rear arc of the Bull Shark. So we're not going to fire the ELRMs, but we are going to fire the Enhanced LRMs. And that'll be just fine. Now, these guys just spawned in. Copy that. So we're going to do a little damage to this Warhammer, but really not very much. Okay, so phase 18... This guy moves, is a catapult too, and the Osprey probably does as well. Now, we don't see a fourth unit here. Oh, okay. We see a fourth unit now, and it's something stealthed out over here. Just a little guy. Okay. Interesting. Receiving so, the Battlemaster is going to turn around and head over here. Moving out. The Battlemaster is, of course, then going to fire on this Warhammer 2C. Now... Maybe we aren't, actually, because of the longbow right here. Maybe we're going to fire on the catapult. Odds are low, but we'll see if we get anything. Yeah, we didn't. I'm not shocked about that. That's okay. Damn it. So next up, they're going to move their catapult, too. And they're going to move their osprey. The osprey moves up. Goes for the corsair and doesn't get anything done. So their Catapult 2 moves next, but we get to move our Awesome or our Corsair first. We're going to take the Corsair out over this direction. Or actually, it doesn't get direct LOS out here, but that doesn't really matter. We're going to put, position it out over Understood. here. Fast. And we're going to fire the Thumpers over at... Hit are exactly the same, so we're going to fire at this Catapult. Not the greatest shooting I've ever seen. The catapult, if it's smart, will go for the rear arc on our bull shark, which will probably hold for a single salvo. Oh. I'm wounded, Commander. Okay, so we're very glad it didn't go for the bull shark there. I think that it probably would have pierced the armor on the bull shark and could have easily killed the bull shark. But that didn't happen. So we're going to move up with our awesome over to here. Moving out. I would love to shoot at the catapult too. Hit odds are actually slightly better on it. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll have a slight overheat here, but that's acceptable. We missed both of our PPCs, but our missiles are going into the catapult too. Now I do expect that the catapult too doesn't really... Oh, it does still have ammo. Okay. Good to know. What can I do for you? Now, the Mauler is going to move up over here. Right, Commander. The Mauler is going to look to attack this mech over here. Now, this is just a little guy, and we don't really know what it is, but it probably doesn't have much armor. Our hitouts are low because of its stealth systems, but oh, we just one-shot it with a heavy gauss on very, very low hit odds. That's gotcha. pretty lucky. I'm not going to lie. This Osprey needs to be eliminated as well, and the Fafnir is going to move up to do just that. I'm just checking to see if there's an unobstructed LOS over here, and there's not. So we're going to move up and fire with the UAC-20s. We're going to Warlord as well. Hitouts are not the best, but that's okay. We already have a structure exposure on that Osprey. So that's beautiful. Target's taking a critical hit. This heat okay, is frying my so now... Their Warhammer 2C gets to fire. And will it shoot at the longbow? Probably. Will it take out this arm? Probably. Oh, it goes for the awesome? That's... Foolish. Okay. I'm ready. Well, our Bullshark is going to position out over here. I mean... 
long tom wise, we're not going to be in a great position for that. We could fire our backup yeah, weapons, rolling. though. I mean, if we wanted to fire the long tom, yeah, this is in minimum range, and this is in minimum range as well. So that's not going to happen. But we can fire our backup weapons at this Warhammer 2C and strip some armor off of it. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We even got a head hit out of that. Not too bad. Okay, so phase 27. We move our longbow first. It's going to step back here. What? No, we're not going to attack. It's going to step back. Rogue tech being a little strange there, but okay. And we could fire on the Warhammer with just the enhanced LRM-15s. We could even fire the ELRMs, even though the odds are not great. I'm going to go ahead and do it. We're even going to Warlord, and we're going to strip as much armor off of this Warhammer 2C as possible. So structure exposure and two double heat sinks destroyed. That's actually a big blow to that Warhammer. I like it. The Awesome is going to position somewhere over here. Moving to position. And we're going to also work on this Warhammer. Now this is a big overheat here. We're gonna to have to not fire that heavy PPC. Firing on target. Another clan double heat sink destroyed on that Warhammer 2C. And a knockdown. So this Warhammer doesn't have much left at this point. Phase 26 is, is the Corsair's turn. The Corsair is going to back off Roger. over here, and we're going to actually fire on the catapult. Confirmed. Nice. We managed to land both of those in between these, which was exactly what I was hoping for. Good to go. Now the Salamander is going to move in over here. I'm checking these hit odds. On tandem, it's not great. I think that we would have massive overkill if we fired on the Warhammer with the Salamander. So I would like to Warlord with the Salamander, and we're going to fire Improved. Yes. These are moderate hit odds, and that's exactly what we're looking for on this catapult, too. Acknowledge. We did not break through the armor, but we did make him lose his his uh, evasive. So that's perfect. The Mauler is not really able to go anywhere of note. We're just going to move up over Battle here. This is not a hugely helpful place to go. Ready for orders. And the Battle Master is going to close in over this way. Now we have a choice. Do we want to fire on the Unsteady Catapult 2, which is about to fire? Or do we want to attack the Warhammer 2C here? I think we're going to go for the kill on the 2C. I'm expecting that this thing has an XL engine. That was a huge amount of damage there. And he ejects. Perfect. So next up is our Fafnir. The Fafnir is going to step over here. Confirmed. We're going to continue firing on this guy. Obviously, we can't afford to fire our ER medium laser or our medium laser or kind of either UAC-20. We're just going to fire the MRM here and sink a bunch of heat. Locking on. So we did eliminate that arm. Now, the Osprey is probably going to turn around and attack the Fafnir, if I had to guess. The Bull Shark is going to step back here. This is still within minimum range of the Long Tom, which is unsurprising. But we're going to go ahead and fire the rest of this. Firing on target. We got a structure exposure there. Maybe a knockdown. Yeah, that's a knockdown. We're not going to get too much more done before he gets up, though. In fact, he's going to get up immediately. I believe all of our mechs have moved now. So the Osprey fires on the Fafnir, as expected. However, he is now open to firing from both the Mauler and the Fafnir. The Catapult 2 gets up, as expected. Sadly, it hasn't lost weapon systems, and it goes for the longbow here, so this could hurt. Actually, it only fires chaff. It fired I'll flamers as well, but they were ineffective. Minimal damage on that hit. Yeah, that wasn't very much at all. So the Salamander is going to close in here. Roger. The Salamander is going for the kill here. I do expect this to be the kill. Confirmed. There we go. One dead catapult too. Name 
Six destroyed. And now all that's left is that Osprey. So the Awesome is going to position up over here. We're just going to drop an LR-20 on him. Just trying to build up a little bit of instability there. It's not going to be very much. The Corsair is going to back off a little bit here. And we're going to drop thumpers on him as well. Okay, we made him unsteady. When does he move phase 16? That's perfect. So he's super dead. There's no way around it. The Battlemaster is going to move over here and sink his heat. The longbow is... Uh, we could turn and lob some LRMs, I suppose. We could do something like this. Yeah, that's some decent damage. The Fafnir is going to close in on him. And it's this round that the Fafnir should do a lot of damage. We can't Warlord. Only 63%. I expected these hit odds to be a little bit higher here. Ah, uh, he's ECM jamming. Okay, that makes sense. That's okay. He's out of here. We actually got lethal damage in the cockpit. One of those AC-20s hit the cockpit there. Hilarious. Okay, so that's all of the enemy I'm units out of here. The Bull Shark is just going to chill. Hunkering down. And the Mauler is going to make for the base up here. It'll get there next round. We'll exit combat here soon. There we go. And now we'll capture the base. Beautiful. The Longbow will move up and sink its heat. The Fafnir will move up and sink its heat. And we'll just brace everything else, I think. There we go. Let's get out of here. So it didn't take me quite as long as I was thinking it would to eliminate those, or that single enemy lance. They kind of came in from a weird angle, right? If that Catapult 2 had attacked the rear arc of the Bull Shark, which it should have, in my opinion, it could have gotten a one-shot kill there, I believe. And that would have been a devastating blow to us. Not an unrecoverable one, but a difficult blow to deal with. So that could have been a lot worse. Now, we did take a good amount of longbow damage over here. We took some Fafnir damage as well. Everyone else is reasonably okay. So that's great. Now, in terms of salvage, what do we want? Well, we know that we don't have much for long tom ammo at this point. We could take two long tom ammo. That wouldn't be awful. All we've got right now is in the bull shark. So I think that's completely okay. Do we have any good weapon systems here? Not really. I mean, there's an MRM-40, but we have four of those. A clan UAC-20. I guess we could take that. Call that good. There's a medium pulse laser here. We've got plenty of them. Angel ECM, we've got some. Beagle probe, we've got some. Clan cockpit, always nice to have around. Endo steel structure, we've got four of them. And, of course, the long tom ammo, which we're keeping. Cool. So we're going to need to do a little bit of repairs here. And we're going to deploy again this month tick, I suspect. But I do want to see about... We're not quite going to get the Mad Cat Mark II back. I really don't think we are. We'll see. But I think the odds on that are extraordinarily low. Reason being, we know that we have at least two mechs that took heavy damage and several others that took light damage, which should, in theory mean that all three of our mech bays are going to be occupied unless we want to prioritize the Madcap Mark II. Yeah, go ahead and do that, Yang. We didn't take any internal damage, so there's nothing really to be done there. We could prioritize the Madcap Mark II. We would not prioritize the Boar's Head and Annihilator in this scenario. So the Fafnir is going to take 21 days. That is longer than I had hoped. The longbow is actually going to take less time than the Fafnir. Interesting. 
So it would be something like this. And I think that means that we're not going to deploy again this month, which is a little bit problematic, actually. The Fafnir is definitely taking longer to, de to repair than I thought. But we are going to deploy again this month, but it'll be right at the end. Yeah. Okay. Um, quarantine. Okay, sure. Kodiak and Paladin are unavailable. I think I accidentally chose an option there. I did not intend to choose an option. I was trying to pause the tick because we have the financial report in one day. Now you can see here, the Awesome, the Corsair, the Bull Shark, and the Battlemaster, and the Mauler are all still not back. So we are going to have to take this month tick. We're not going to go very far into the next month. But our money is dipping. There's no doubt about it. We need to make some funds. And that is definitely what we're going to focus on doing for the next little bit here. So there's everything except the Boar's Head and the Annihilator back. Perfect. Let's hop into the barracks, make sure that our pilots are all completely good to go. Of course, we've only got the two pilots that need anything. Kodiak is one of them that was quarantined, so that's fine. Awaiting Poet, order. are you good to go? No, you are not. Okay. So let's hop into the mech bay here, and at this point, we definitely do want to deploy again. It's a little bit late in the episode to do that, so I think instead what we're going to do is we're going to work on building up... You, you, can, you can stop spinning, Mr. Annihilator. We're going to work on building up our funds by getting rid of some vehicle parts. So we're just going to go through this real quick here, and that'll be fine. Excellent. So, what are we looking for in this? Well, right now we're looking for things like this that are low-tech. We're going to get rid of that. Get out of here. So that's 179,000. Not bad there. And we're also looking for any vehicle parts. Some low tech. Well, not necessarily any vehicle parts. Any vehicle parts that we're not likely to use to pad out our current forces. And I need to look at how much tonnage we have available with our standard deploy right now, but we would need the Boar's Head and Annihilator for that. Or at least to calculate those in. So we're just going to get rid of some of these low-tech parts. There are a number of them. And that will also save us some on our financial report. Because our financial report is based on the tonnage that we have stored. Okay, so a Padilla. That's an arrow for... And we're probably going to keep that around. It's a 75 tonner. And I'm in the market for variable weight artillery pieces. I don't exactly know what the weight we're looking for is. But for for vehicles that fire artillery is what we're in the market for. So we'll just get rid of this Hector part. Uh, do we want to scrap this chassis and sail spell parts or scrap and keep parts? We want to sail. There we go. Perfect. This is a Hector that we used to have. Okay, we've also got an Ostwar here to scrap. Now, these are not worth very much because they're low tech, but that's fine. We've got a Thunderbolt here, 27k. Always nice to have the ability to get rid of some of these parts. And this is saving us money on our financial report. We do need to clean this out. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. So what else do we have over here that we might be interested in getting rid of? Well, we've got this dervish part. There we go. And this gladiator part. Excellent. We don't have very many vehicle parts in here, do we? Ah, now here is a Padilla that we would definitely want to get put together. That's a long Tom Cannon and an LRM-5 and only 55 tons. 
That's very tonnage efficient. No doubt about it. So the Wolverine is going to get scrapped. We're keeping the Padilla parts. Because I am in the market for that. What else might we have down this way? There's a Phoenix part here. We'll get rid of that. We've made almost a million C bills doing this, so that's not too bad. There's a blackjack part here as well. Of course, these are not our most valuable parts. They're kind of our least valuable parts. Now, the Nidhog parts here, these are pretty valuable, and we're going to absolutely scrap them. That's 350k right there. And then there's this as well. We could ready a Nidhog, but I'm not going to. I, I don't... I, I think that heavy bombers are... Threatening, sure, but they're too easy to shoot down, to eliminate. They have to engage at a fairly close range, and that's not what we're looking for. We're going to scrap this Hetzer part, and we're going to scrap these Hetzer parts as well. There we go, another 14,000. We're up to almost 6 mil, not too bad. A11 lightning bolt, get out of here. The problem with the heavy bombers is simply that they're best when they're attacking the rear arc, like from short range. That's the primary issue there. Okay, well, we have reached the bottom here. Now, we do have a couple of components that need to be sold. Specifically, there's some deprecated ammo. I'm going to keep most of our components around, but I want to get rid of the, the deprecated ammo here. So we'll... Actually, we have to go to the store for that, don't we? <laughs> that would help. So if we hop over into the store, we'll sell that deprecated ammo, get that out of our... I, I don't want to buy. We'll get that out of our inventory. Excellent. So we'll sell this, and sell this. Perfect. Okay. So there's that done, and at this point, we are now fully ready to deploy. It's a little late in the episode to do that, of course, so I'm going to put a cut in here, and next episode, we will deploy right away. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and I will see you all next time.